What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel, and we're going to have a quick little talk about Last Night in Soho, the latest film from Edgar Wright, starring Thomas and McKenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, the late Diana Rigg, and Matt Smith. Now, this film, I'm going to have to be really, really careful because I don't want to spoil anything that happens within the film, so it's going to be a quick little review, just talking about what I think about the film overall, because this film has been getting, you know, mixed reviews all across the board. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people, you know, like the film, but have a problem with the way it ends. Because this film does have some twists and turns at the end. Now, for me, my, you know, my impression of the film is I liked it. It definitely, it, about two hours long. And the second hour is definitely where things start building up. That's where things really start picking up, you know, the pace. And Thomas and Mackenzie, her character of Ellie... You know, she's being, you know, accepted this fashion school because she wants to be a fashion designer. So she goes to the um, the Soho District of London. And, you know, the roommate that she has when she gets there, she does not get along with this. This girl is not very nice. Basically, you know, she's caught, wanted to cause problems for Ellie. So she moves out, takes it upon herself, moves out, and goes to this apartment where um, Diana Riggs' character, Mrs. C Miss Collins, you know, she's she's the landlady. She has one, you know, another, one extra room, you know, in the upstairs that Ellie goes and takes. And that's where she starts seeing visions. Because Ellie has an ability, almost. She starts seeing, like, visions and kind of, like, almost, like, get in touch with, like, almost like the sixth sense, almost, where you have that touch, you know, with the spiritual, you know, spiritual world. So she starts seeing things featuring Anya Taylor-Joy's character and of Sandy. You know, she's in this nightclub. Matt Smith is, like, almost, like, He's like, a, like the manager of the nightclub almost. But again, I don't want to get into too many things because, you know, there, there's a um, relationship that does happen with um, Anya Taylor-Joy's character and Matt Smith's character. And Ellie basically is, you know, almost like with it, like in her body, like living through this, seeing exact everything that has transpired back in, the, you know, she's transported back to the 60s where this is, you know, where this is taking place. And something has happened back then. A crime has been committed. And it's basically, it becomes, this is a mystery. This is a Hitchcock type you know, mystery. And because it has, a, it has, you know, giallo kind, you know, kind of aesthetics to it, the way it looks with some of the visuals and the colors. And it has, you know, a little bit of Hitchcock as well. So it has a little mixture of everything. But I think Edgar Wright does a fairly good job. Like I said, two hours long. The first hour definitely is that build up. The second hour is where things Definitely picked up for me and where I enjoyed this film more. It's where things really started ramping up. And I was like, okay, I want to see exactly where we're going to go with this. But like I said, visually, it looks really good. The music is fantastic. If you are a fan of 60s music, this is the film for you. If you like mystery and 60s music, this is the film. Because the, the music was fantastic. It really, really was. Enjoyed it quite a bit. And... You know, there's nothing wrong with that old school music. Absolutely. Gotta have it. And I like it. I like it a lot. I might actually want to pick the soundtrack up for this if I get the chance. But, like I said, visually it looks great. And, you know, there's a scene that takes place. Because if you've seen, like, in the trailer, Ellie has, like, makeup on, almost like um, Halloween makeup on her face. Because, it, yeah, there it does, you know, happen actually around, like, Halloween time. And she goes to a Halloween party. So she has, like, that ghostly kind of, you know, white makeup on with the, with the black around the eyes. And that's in the, that's, I th I think once you get to that part of the film, that's when things just skyrocket and take off. But overall, I think you know I can't say any more about the film because I don't want to spoil anything because it definitely, it's everything is not what it seems in this film. Things that you might think you have figured out, and probably not. You're gonna have to watch to the end to try to put things together. But last night in Soho was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, it definitely was not the film that I was thinking was going to be. I was thinking it was going to be more, you know, more of a, um, a creepier kind of thing. And it does have some creepiness to it, you know, with certain things that happen. But, you know, through and through, it, it's definitely a Hitchcock and a Giallo type film, you know, mixed together. And I thought it was well done. And as like I said, it's definitely, you know, don't give up on it, you know, for the first part. Definitely see it all the way through to the end if you get a chance to check this out. Because I don't think... It's, you're not going to be doing this film any or yourself any service, for that matter, by not seeing it all the way through to the end. It's definitely worth checking out. So if you get a chance, definitely go to the theaters and check this one out. I was definitely not disappointed, you know, going and checking it out. So like, subscribe, and comment if you get the chance, and I'll catch you in another episode. Take care.